tech rabbit here. Yeah, I know. I did promise I wouldn't. But yeah, being forced to buy into the uh, Apple ecosystem. I've been bored, but I've been holding out for six years, and I think that's pretty good. Yeah, rather expensive piece of equipment. This is the uh, iPhone XS Max with 256 gigs of storage. Yeah. And um, the only thing you get in the package is a small charger. with a physical connector so they're not wireless and then you get the USB connection cable so not much so it doesn't include a charger fast charger so you have to buy that separate no Lightning cable included. Hasn't got an earphone. Uh, three and a half millimeter adapter not included. You need to buy it separately. No wireless charging pad included. Then we get to the actual phone. included in the shop. <laughs> so you just get the phone. Yeah, no, that's not very good. So anyway, I just thought I'd make this short video. I mean, there, there's lots of reviews about the iPhone XS Max, so you know, I'm, I'm not going to try and do a review on it or anything. I just wanted to discuss the actual uh, pressures that I've been under to move to the Apple infrastructure or worked into it. And um, one of the reasons is my family over the years has moved to a completely Apple infrastructure. So basically, we, yeah, everybody else except me has been using um, Apple um, smartphones. And then the other thing is that my trusted old Samsung smartphone that I've used. This is, a, this is actually a Note 3, so that tells you how many years I've been holding out here. And um, this finally gave up from a software perspective that um, there, there's the Samsung's own skin, which is called uh, Touch Wiz. And it kept on crashing all the time, more and more and more. And basically it made the phone, or the I don't think there's a hardware fault. I think what's happened is that it's got some update uh, down the line, there's some other software update because you don't get you don't get operating system updates for the for this one anymore, or security patches for that matter. So anyway, that. So what are the what are the reasons to move to the Apple infrastructure? I mean. Basically, it's this, uh, yeah, it's the issue of infrastructure. You know? At least in my region, uh, every, every, yeah, lots of the infrastructure has moved towards, uh, by default, supporting the iOS, um, iPhone infrastructure. So, yeah, it makes it a lot, you know, like if we look at the, the security and easiness of um, uh, digital payment methods then then basically the, the, the default go-to environment is, is iOS and uh, the iPhone and um, yeah so I opted for the phone so this is the top of the line um, many other reviews on this I think actually one thing I would like to point out this then and, and would be a reasoning for also for why I selected this specific model is that um, this is, in many cases, uh, misrepresented in a lot of reviews out there, uh, mainly due to the fact that it's a misunderstood smartphone. 
Uh, I don't know why Apple did this, but Apple packed in uh, a lot of technology related to um, specifically processing power, like the main processor, the, uh, the AI processing module, and, and other other techniques. And so this is basically one can say for, you know, if you make a review of, of this for today's use, uh, it's it's hard to justify as paying what they want, you know, really. Um, if one uh, looks at it on a little bit longer, if one says that, okay, one keeps the phone for like, I have a two-year payment plan on this, keep it for three years. So, so let's say maybe, you know, one year from now there will be applications that actually need the power that's in this device. So I think that this, this is, uh, one could justify some of the extra cost due to the fact that it's relatively future-proof. Um, the, the, you know, if one's talking about the competition, which is the Android infrastructure world, I think that it's, um, it's, it's, it has become too fragmented um, to a certain extent from a user interface uh, usage perspective. And um, also the, the, the flagship products on the Android side have actually going the same going down the same route as Apple does with this sort of, um, you know, they increase the base, base call and price. And, um, and uh, Apple still, uh, and as I said, my experience with the Samsung, Samsung world is that basically they gave up updating this. The, the Note series, so uh, even though the hard, the hard, this hardware is perfectly okay, it, it performed adequately for everything that I was doing. But the, you know, when when the software side of it lags and, and it's not updated anymore, you're dead. And basically, Apple has shown a little bit more of a track record of keeping iOS up to date and updating the platform as needed. And um, you know. The, one shouldn't actually disregard the memory, the storage capacity one has. I mean, our experience in the family usage scenario is that we bypassed 64 gigs as, as the minimum um, memory or storage memory. So we find 128 now or 256 to be the basically minimum. So I would say a minimum is 128 nowadays with all the applications and the games and stuff one loves. I mean, without even needing to go into technical details, this is fast enough. It, it, it's really fast. And uh, as I said, that the, 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 the main problem with marketing this uh, XS10 is that it's too, it's too powerful for the, for the, you know, this t today's market. You know, it's, it, 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 it's not showcasing its full potential yet. So let's say within another, as I said, within another year, year and a half, we'll probably start seeing applications that will start um, utilizing this platform better. But I really do need some coffee to survive the um, cost of this. Many buns <laughs> to be able to get over the fact how much this costs. I mean, I won't demo it or anything. I mean, it's an iOS device. It's like everybody knows what an iOS device is, and I won't compare iOS versus Android, other than to make my end user comments related to the fact that one of the key, one of the key reasons for switching is this, you know, payment infrastructure. The, and in our region, it's very much coming to um, uh, to um, to the level where we're going to be moving to. Um, just purely, um, uh, yeah, wireless mobile-based payments, and, uh, and I still feel, due to the fragmentation of the Android infrastructure, that uh, Apple has a hands up there with their credit card handling mechanisms and stuff. And I really don't feel that safe having my payment data on, like on this Note 3. I wasn't, uh, didn't really like to have my banking stuff on that. So, I uh, will see, uh, come, comes with very little accessories, so you have to be planned to also, in, in addition to paying a huge cost for the actual phone, you're going to have to pay for additional accessories. <laughs>
that you would think you would get for free. Um, been using it for a couple of days now. Initial experience is that it works. Yeah, it works very fast, very reliable. Um, so it'll just be. And then I was thinking I could actually use this this as a from a maker perspective. This can do 4K video at 60 frames per second. So I'm actually probably going to use this as one of my um, production cameras. But anyway, that was my short grant on it. Um, had to, you know, give up and fall over and go for the, you know, move over to the, be borged into the iPhone world. So for good or worse. Okay, well, if you thought this video was interesting, then so you know consider subscribing. There's going to be other videos. I don't make phone reviews or stuff, normally speaking, but I just thought it would be nice, really important to get this message out there. That, um, and, uh, and also, as I said, the many, many reviews of the, um, I think the iPhone XS uh, Max, uh, they're, they're a bit, uh, they're a bit off, off cue because they're not really taking, yeah, they, they, no, there was only one review that was actually talking about more like, okay, you know, what does this phone look like from a one to a two year um, application development perspective and I thought that all other reviews are just oh it's it's too expensive yes it is too expensive for, <laughs> if you look at what you get and what, what functionality you use today but I think that if you give it another year then, then um, it will probably be I am hoping that then it will be that um, one will actually be able to utilize the, the there will be application areas and stuff that will come in that will be, that one can actually use the, um, the the extra processing part. Anyway, thanks for watching. Just going to turn the camera off. Can't use the phone to do it because I was demoing the phone. <laughs>